All right, hey guys, it is Rocky Flag, and I would like to say Happy Thanksgiving. Time for food and fun, and I have to go to work today, so fuck my life. But it's okay though, because. I am about to go to you with my review of Parasite the Maxim episode 8 and 9 because we got two episodes yesterday. I was so freaking happy because this show is just so freaking awesome. It is climbing its way up there with Tokyo Ghoul. By the way, I will be starting to review Tokyo Re hopefully by the next time the next chapter comes out and I will be starting to review some more stuff so this is more to add on to my plate. But I love it because I love you guys. So. Today I will be reviewing, like I said, Parasite the Maxim, episode 8 and 9, Freezing Point, and Beyond Good and Evil, and these two episodes, they went the fuck in on these episodes, oh my god, I was so completely just not prepared for the awesomeness that was these two episodes, and I just have to say, Mitsu, he just, he can't win for losing, honestly, because literally throughout both episodes, he got shown up by Sunichi, and Sunichi literally didn't have to do anything. He got beat up by Shimada. Shimada didn't have to do anything. And then he didn't even have to get beat up by Sunichi again. And Sunichi didn't do anything. So, Miso, he just he just needs to stop trying. Honestly, he just needs to stop trying. Because if he keeps trying, he really will end up dead. Even Shimada said that if he came at him again, he would kill him. I mean, I don't understand what his, what his thought process is as to why he keeps trying. But maybe that's just me. I don't know. But in this episode, and I feel so bad because like throughout both of these episodes, Sunichi just kept putting a wedge that drove him and Murano further and further away from each other. And I mean, it's, it's drastically noticeable that Sunichi has completely changed since before he went to go like save his dad. And even, like, Murano, of course, noticed this. Because they even show, at one point, they show, I believe it was in um, Beyond Good and Evil, Episode 9, they show when Sunichi and Murano are, like, when they were younger, like, when they, I guess when they first got to high school, and they were talking, like, she came up to him and started talking to him, and Sunichi was, like, his old, jumpy, nervous, like, cute nerd self, and... She loved that about him. She genuinely loved that about him. Like, she loved that he had insecurities, that he wasn't, like, just one of the cool guys that went to her school. She genuinely liked... Well, I wouldn't say she genuinely loved Sinichi, but these two episodes literally probably <laughs> made her never want to talk to him again. And there was even a point where she said that you're not, you're not Sinichi, and he... And then she tried to give him the benefit of the doubt, and each time he just fucked up even more. So, good job, Sunichi. But, I think the worst part, the one part that put her over the most was when Sunichi threw away the puppy. And I have to say, I have to say my jaw literally dropped open. Like, I was not prepared at all for, for that. For that shit no that <laughs> I still I can't fathom maybe it's cuz I'm like Murano I can't fathom somebody throwing away a dead puppy I mean I understand that the puppy is dead and I understand that there is no more like there's no more life left in the puppy but you don't just throw that shit in the trash it'd be like if your parent died and you threw them away in the dumpster because oh it's just a parent shaped lump of meat the fuck no you don't do that what the f <laughs> Lord Jesus. But, other than that, we also see, like, Tamiya Ryuko has come back. And she also has recruited another boy who looks like he's in Sunichi's, like, age range. And his name is Hideo Shimada. And Shimada, he, he really is ruthless. He's almost just as bad as A, but he's extremely intelligent, like Ryuko is, which makes it even scarier. But... At one point, like, he, you know, he shows himself in school, and he's, like, showing Sunichi up, and all the girls are falling for him, and Sunichi knows that there is something off about this motherfucker. And even, like, even Migi and Sunichi had a conversation with Hideo, and 
it's me, you know, me pretty much like me and you was about to fall asleep again and he told Sunichi that we need to leave now. So they walked away and he was like, we weren't even done talking. He was like, I'm about to fall asleep. What do you think he will do if he finds out that Migi literally is asleep for four hours at a time every day? Like, what do you think that Hideo is going to use, like, do with that information? He'd probably try to take over the world if he found out that Migi was asleep inside Sunichi's body for four hours at a time. So that's completely out of the question but <sighs> these episodes these episodes are so awesome and by the way am i the only person who enjoys watching this intro like the intro to this show every time it comes on maybe it's because i love the song so much but this intro is just so freaking awesome like the the, the intro is my freaking tone but don't judge me so other than that, like, throughout the episode, we see, like, Ryoko, she's talking to this man without a face. I mean, of course he probably has a face, but we can't see his face. So I feel like he is going to be a threat later on. And then also we see Kana. Kana has resurfaced herself in the show. And pretty much, long story short, she is extremely perceptive. And even Hideo said this at one point when she was pretty much stalking Sunichi and she thought it was him. And it turned out to be Shimada and Shimada tried to, I, it looked like he was going to kill her or something because of her perceptiveness. I don't think that's a word, but you know what I mean. So he he was about to drag her away and Sneechi saved her, of course, and then Murano saw that and then that just made it even worse for Sneechi and Sneechi was like, why, for God's sake, why does this keep happening? I don't understand. But I feel like Kana is gonna be either an issue or a help it's either gonna be one way or the other she's not just gonna be there to be there i feel like she's either going to end up getting herself killed or end up getting herself revealed will get end up getting sunichi revealed and then that'll just fuck up the rest of his life so and also 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 and it's probably gonna be my final point in this ep in this <laughs> in this review ryuko ryuko takakawa yeah Tak. Tachikawa. Oh my god, this this bitch. And I use that term very lightly because I refuse to call another girl a bitch because you don't call girls out of their name like that. But this bitch, she she has completely lost her mind. I honestly do not understand what the fuck is wrong with her. Like her brother, her brother is a like is a police sketch artist and he why didn't she tell him? Why did she not tell him that one of her classmates was a fucking parasite? I don't uh, Oh my god, I honestly I, I honestly just don't understand what the fuck was going on in her mind to make her not tell someone. I mean I literally just lost all respect for her because I actually kind of liked her. She was an interesting character. Well, I mean, for what they showed of her, she was an interesting character. But what the fuck, Ryoko? Oh my god. Me, not Ryoko. Yuko. That's <laughs> Yuko. I hope I'm sorry if I kept saying Ryoko. What, like, what the fuck, Yuko? Yuko. Really? Really, dude? Really? Bruh. Bruh. No. The. Uh, that just that angered me to no end and the fact that she called like she literally first she followed Shimada I can somewhat understand that but why the fuck would you follow him around if you already know I mean you literally saw like a chunk of his head gashed in from a baseball and then it went away and then you saw his face change what the fuck why would you keep why would you confront this person I, I honestly do not understand why would you confront this person and then when she confronted him now it's a possibility that Sunichi could get revealed because if she and I will call fucking bullshit if she was willing to try to reason with Shimada and then she like tells the police on Sunichi and Sunichi has to come in there and kill him from what I can see from the previews from the next episode he's Sunichi is going to it looks like Sunichi is going to going to confront Shimada. So there's a fucking possibility that, and I saw Murano in there too, so it's a possibility that Murano and Yuko will see Sunichi have to use Migi. And if 
it's her like if it's her fault that Sinichi gets like quarantined or arrested or hunted after where he can't go home or something happens I feel like something something is gonna get back to his dad and he won't be able to talk to his dad anymore because his dad sees all the parasites as evil then I will call fucking bullshit I will call bullshit and be so angry that I will still watch Parasite but I will watch it in anger but <laughs> other than that this, this, uh, these two episodes were so fucking awesome, and I was so ecstatic when I saw that we were going to have two episodes. I found out about it last week, but the fact that we got two episodes of Parasite when normally I'm so pissed that we only get one was awesome. So yeah, sorry for all of my shenanigans. I'm actually in a really good mood today. So, as always, I would love to hear how you guys felt about this episode, and how do you feel about the way I changed things up? I tried to do things a little bit differently in this, in this video, but... As always, please remember to comment, thumbs up, and subscribe. It helps me out a whole lot. And this is Subaki Swag saying adios.